Oxidation numbers are numbers that can be assigned to atoms in any sort of form. So atoms that are all by themselves or atoms that are part of molecules or ionic compounds or polyatomic ions. The purpose of the oxidation number is that we use it to keep track of electrons as they are being moved around in redox reactions. In this video, I'm only going to be teaching you how to assign oxidation numbers to atoms. I'm not going to talk about how we would use them to keep track of electrons in this particular video. That's something that we'll cover much later. But right now we're just focusing on how to go about assigning oxidation numbers to atoms. When you're assigning oxidation numbers to atoms, the first atom that you want to focus on is the hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom is almost always having an oxidation number of plus one. It's not always plus one. There are a couple of exceptions. One pretty common exception is in the hydrogen molecule. Hydrogen is, uh, has an oxidation number of zero. So in H2, hydrogen has an oxidation number of zero. And because I'm going to be writing a lot of zeros and O's in this video, I'm going to draw a line through my zeros so that you can tell the difference between the two. So in hydrogen, hydrogen is uh, H2 molecule, hydrogen is zero. And then also sometimes we have an H minus ion. And in the H minus ion, the oxidation number of hydrogen is minus one. So there's a couple of exceptions. When you're assigning oxidation numbers to the atoms in a molecule, you should always start with the hydrogen and do it first. So if we were to start um, assigning oxidation numbers to this particular compound, we would want to start with hydrogen first. Uh, if we were working on this one down here, the first atom that we would start with is the hydrogen. So once you get all the hydrogens assigned, the next atom that you should focus on is the oxygen atom. Oxygen atoms always have an oxidation number of minus two. And again, there's going to be a couple of exceptions that are similar to hydrogen. So in the O2 molecule, the oxidation number of oxygen is zero. And also there's a special ion. Um, it's called the peroxide ion O22 minus. So that's a polyatomic ion with O22 minus charge. In that form, the oxidation number is a minus one. So those exceptions are really similar to what we see for hydrogen. And again, I just want to emphasize that while this is definitely the most common situation for hydrogen and oxygen, you will occasionally see these forms. And these situations over here are both very rare. It's not likely that you'll come across them. So after you get all the oxygen numbers assigned, then the next thing that you're going to focus on are monatomic ions. A monatomic ion is an ion that is just made of a single atom. Um, for monatomic ions, the charge of the ion is the same as the oxidation number. So for example, a monatomic ion would be Cl minus. It's just one atom in the form of an ion, and its oxidation number is a minus one. The oxidation number is the same as a charge. Sodium is another monatomic ion, and its oxidation number would be its charge, which is plus one. Sometimes these monatomic ions are grouped together as part of a compound, so you might see something that is like KBr, and you would have to recognize that potassium commonly exists as a monatomic ion. So in that form, the potassium is, uh, has an oxidation number that's equal to its charge, which is plus one, and the bromide, which is a monatomic ion, uh, its oxidation number would be its charge, uh, minus one. After you get all of the monatomic ions sorted out, then the last thing for you to do is work on all the other atoms in a molecule. And there isn't really a specific rule that we can use for assigning oxidation numbers to the other atoms in a molecule, other than we know that the sum of all the oxidation numbers in the entire molecule or compound or polyatomic ion the sum of all the oxidation numbers is always equal to the overall charge of the atom, molecule, compound, whatever. Sum of oxidation numbers is equal to the overall charge. And we're going to use this fact to help us figure out the 
the oxidation numbers of any other atoms in the molecule. So let's just jump right in with some of these examples. And again, I want to say one more time that we always have to assign oxidation numbers in order of these particular rules, one through four. So we don't jump in with the chlorines or working on the sum part. We start with hydrogen first. So in this first compound, we can see that we have a hydrogen. And we know, because it's not one of these weird scenarios for hydrogen, we know that the oxidation number of this hydrogen is a plus one. Now, there isn't any convention at all about how we express oxidation numbers on a compound. So what I usually do is just kind of write them and point at the atom and just sort of fit them in wherever I would like. And then I move on to rule number two. Oxygen is always a minus two, except for in some weird situations. We don't have those weird situations here. And so that's literally all that there is to it for this particular compound. We can verify um, that we've done this correctly because minus two plus one equals a minus one, which is the charge. So, you know, we're following that step four. That's pretty easy. Let's move on to our next example. Starting with hydrogen, we don't have any. Moving on to oxygen is a minus two. So the oxygen in this molecule, the oxidation number of the oxygen is minus two. And... For monatomic ions, we don't have any of those. Sulfur does not normally exist as a monatomic ion. It's not one of these standard ions. So now to assign the oxidation number for sulfur, we have to move on down to uh, use this. The sum of the oxidation numbers is equal to the overall charge. So in terms of the sum of the oxidation numbers, we have whatever the oxidation number is for sulfur, which we're going to figure out, plus minus 2 for one oxygen, plus minus 2 for the other oxygen, put some parentheses around this. This has to be equal to the overall charge, which is zero for this particular compound. So we can do some pretty simple math there and figure out that the oxidation number on this sulfur is a plus four. Let's keep practicing that. So here's our next example. We have no hydrogen, we have oxygen. So we know that those oxygens are minus twos. Chromium, we're gonna have to figure out using this sum rule. So to figure out the chromium, we know that we have two times whatever the oxidation number is for chromium, because we've got two of those chromiums, plus seven, the number of oxygen atoms, times negative two. Each one is a negative two. And that's going to be equal to the overall charge of minus two. We've got to do some, uh, some pretty simple algebra here. Two times x minus 14 equals negative two. We'll add 14 to both sides. So this side works out to be 12. 2x equals 12. So that tells us that the oxidation number of the chromium, each chromium, is a plus 6. Here's another example, Na2C2O4. So we are starting with oxygen. The oxygens are always a minus 2. We can see we have our friend sodium. And the oxidation number for our simple sodium ion is always going to be plus 1. To figure out carbon, we're going to have to use this algebra rule. So we have two sodium atoms, and each one of those sodiums is a plus one. We have two carbons plus one. We have two carbon atoms, and we don't know what their oxidation number is. We have um, four oxygen ions. Each one is a minus two. And that has to add up to zero, which is our overall charge here. So we have 2 plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Um, this simplifies to 2x equals 6. So each one of our carbon atoms must be a plus 3. Looks good. Let's move on to this example right here. This one's actually going to be quite a bit easier. Our oxygen, we know, is minus 2. Chromium, we don't know what that is. We're going to figure out what the chromium is. So we have 2 times whatever chromium is, we're not sure, plus 3 oxygen atoms, minus 2 each, sums up to 0, which is the charge. 2x minus 6 equals 0. So each one of our chromiums must be a plus 3. And so over here, I've saved this one for last. This one's a pretty big compound. It's got a whole lot of atoms in it and a lot of ones that we're going to have to figure out by, um, by logic. One of the things that you should uh, right away recognize in this 
compound is that we have some polyatomic ions that are just kind of being helpfully identified to us by the use of the parentheses. Whenever you have polyatomic ions like NH4 or SO4, it's a lot of times easier to just kind of separate those polyatomic ions and work on them individually. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say for the NH4 polyatomic ion and the polyatomic ion NH4 has a plus one charge, I'm just going to start by assigning the oxidation numbers to these atoms. So I know that hydrogen has plus one, and in this particular molecule, my nitrogen atom plus the four hydrogen atoms has to add up to the overall charge of ammonium, which is plus one. So this tells me that the nitrogen in this particular molecule must be equal to uh, oxidation number of minus three. And what we get for this oxidation number when we've separated this thing out, it definitely translates over to this molecule here. So even though we calculated it just for this individual ion, it's still applicable over here. So we're going to do the same thing for the sulfate. Now, in order for you to be able to do this successfully, you're going to have to either look up or remember the correct charges for these polyatomic ions. Oxygen is a minus 2, and we have to figure out what sulfur is. Sulfur is X, there's only one of them, plus our four negative two oxidation numbers, and that's gonna add up to a total minus two, the charge of the entire thing. X minus eight equals negative two. So here the oxidation number for this sulfur is a plus six, and that's true for, for this sulfur as well. So now we have the oxidation numbers figured out for all of these guys. And we can just figure out what the oxidation number is for cerium in the middle. Um, now, there are two different ways that we could actually figure out the oxidation number for the cerium. One way would be to add, oops, to add all of them up. So we know that altogether we have to have an overall oxidation number of zero. So we can say that we have two nitrogens, each one is a minus three. We have a total of eight hydrogens, each one is a plus one. We have three sulfurs, each sulfur is a plus six, and we have a total of 12 oxygens, each is a minus two, and all of those are gonna add up with cerium, they're gonna add up to zero. And that's not that hard, just get your calculator out or write it out by hand. Another thing that we can do that kind of simplifies it a little bit is that we can recognize, well, for each ammonium ion, the sum of these oxidation numbers is a plus one. So we have over here, we have two ammoniums, each one with a plus one. And then we have our cerium, we don't know what that is. And then we have three sulfates, and we've figured out that for the sulfate, the sum of the oxidation numbers in the sulfate always adds up to a minus two. So we're just kind of shortening up that process. Two plus x minus six is equal to zero, the overall charge. Um, minus 4 plus x equals 0. So we know that the cerium here has to be a plus 4. And that was a pretty tricky example, but we got it figured out.